We're not the serious special. That's why we're going first. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you guys ready? Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. Stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle dandy. Mind the music and the step and with the girls be handy. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. We'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer and the boys will shout. The ladies, they will all turn out and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, a Yankee Doodle Do or Die, a real live nephew of my Uncle Sam, born on the 4th of July. I've got a Yankee Doodle sweetheart, she's my Yankee Doodle Joy. Yankee Doodle came to London just to ride the ponies. I am a Yankee Doodle boy. And then a real American song. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Well, I wish I was in the land of cotton. Old times there are not forgotten. Look away, look away, look away, Dixieland. In Dixieland, where I was born in early morning. Look away, look, look away, look away, look away in Dixieland. Dixieland. Well, then I wish I, <laughs> I was in Dixieland. Dixieland. Hooray, hooray, in Dixieland I'll take my stand to live and die in Dixie. Away, away, away down south in Dixie. Away, away, away down south in Dixie. Amen. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> well, if nothing else, that was fun. Amen. We had to throw in one good song to make all those Yankee songs, you know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When we were in Bible college, uh, every month they had what they called the School of the Prophets. And all the preacher boys would come over to the church and church members and all the college, that anybody that could be there on a Saturday night, one Saturday night a month, and they'd pick out 18 preacher boys at random. And you got to preach five minutes. But then once a year, in April every year, they had the North-South School of the Prophets. And basically, we fought the Civil War again every year. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it was always a good time. And praise the Lord for America. Amen. Amen. And we ask that God would continue to bless America. Well, it's good to see everybody this morning. Does anybody need a bulletin? Want to be sure everybody gets one of those? If you need one, if you just slip your hand up, our ushers will get by and get you a copy of that. So you can know what's going on. Amen. Well, here in just a little while, we're hoping by noon, we'll go back to the back and eat. Amen. We got br barbecue brisket and all sorts of good stuff. I don't know what all sides we got. I haven't been back there and looked. Beans. Beans. <laughs> I think there's some, some potato salad. I'm not sure. But anyway, whatever there is, we'll have a good time with it. Amen. There's hot dogs also, so there's plenty to eat. And uh, would like to say welcome to our visitors. And uh, if this is your first time or you haven't been here in a while, if you'll lift your hand. And let the ushers come by. Hey, Brother Jonathan, good to see you. It's terrible to call you a visitor, but we're glad you're here this morning. Amen. All right. Good. To, it is good to see everybody. Looking forward to the day. And uh, we pray the rain may stay away a little while so we can play outside for a little bit. We do have a new ping pong table. 
and we've got uh, beanbag toss or whatever you want to call that. We'll just we'll just have a good time no matter what the weather is. Amen. And I'm just looking forward to that. And by the way, we are celebrating Independence Day because it's more than a date. It's more than July the fourth. It was our independence, trusting in God to make a nation. And uh, we celebrate that every year. 245 years, is it, this year? Long time. And praise the Lord for His goodness through the years. And pray that He continues to bless America. Amen. Very good. Don't forget, Tuesday or this afternoon, after the activities and meal and so forth, we'll come back in for an afternoon service. And the teenagers, well, one of them's excited. The teens, particularly the ones that went to camp this past week, are basically going to be doing the service. And uh, they'll be sharing their testimonies, and uh, some of them will be preaching, they'll be singing, and uh, we'll just have a good time listening to what the Lord did in the hearts of our young people. Amen? Look forward to that. And then Tuesday, we have our regular soul winning visitation time at 6.30, Wednesday, our regular service, uh, and then uh, Saturday, soul winning. Let's see, there's something in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, the Ladies' Summer Fellowship, Living a Fruitful Life. And that'll be this Saturday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And so be sure, ladies, that you are involved in that. You'll have a good time. And then Friday, July the 16th is our Missions Conference Work Night. You say, I don't know what that is. We come up and get the church ready for Missions Conference. We decorate. Folks work on decorating their classrooms. That's why we drew those countries out for each class to have an idea of what to decorate their class or their area as, amen? And I'm still just, you know, just a little bit bitter I didn't get Mexico. I got everything at, at the house to decorate for Mexico. I don't know nothing about South Africa, though, but we'll figure it out, amen? Uh, the Zulu, is the Zulu warriors, you said? Yeah. Zulu, yeah, we'll decorate like... They're, they're warriors, so that would be a good thing to decorate, right? I mean, we'll see. We'll figure it out. Anyway, so don't forget those things. And, and uh, then junior camp coming up July the 19th through the 23rd at Lake Texoma Baptist Youth Camp. Uh, they'll be heading out. The, if you're going into the fourth grade through going into the seventh grade or nine, nine to 12 years old, uh, the cost will be $200. and includes your spending money. Uh, so please see Brother McBride. If your child plans to attend, he's the guy in the sound booth. He's waving everybody back there. And uh, we are going to do some, uh, some. oh, I don't know if you want to call them scholarships or donations or whatever, uh, sponsorships, things like that. So we'll be talking about that the next couple of weeks to try to help out the kids that might not be able to afford to go. We'll try to help them go, amen. And uh, just looking forward to that. Uh, I think that's all that I have as far as announcements, so let's stand together, and we will sing page 205 as we prepare for our handshake and our offering. 205, he keeps me singing. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in our lives that ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Let's get around and greet one another.
on the last. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry skies. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Amen. Aren't you glad he keeps us singing? Praise the Lord. Well, join with us this morning as we give back to the Lord part of what he's given to us. Amen. Brother Croker, could you ask the blessing on the offering, please? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we get to uh, be in your house. And Lord, help us never take that for granted. Mm -hmm. Thank you for an opportunity to give back to you. Uh, you've richly blessed us. Lord, just watch over this offering. Use it to spread the gospel further. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Weep again, let America weep. Sorrow and mourning bring joy to the soul. Tears of a broken heart will cleanse and make whole. Lord, let us weep again, let America. Weep. Once as a child we wept and prayed on our knees. We called on the Lord our God for every need. But now that we're full and free, there's no need to cry. We're sick and we're dying and our eyes are all dry lord let us weep again let america weep sorrow and mourning bring joy to the soul tears of a broken heart will cleanse us weep again let America weep dear people we need to weep and pray for our land for only a broken heart will break the bands oh what will we have to do to break 
revival to start. Lord, let us weep again. Let America weep. Sorrow and mourning bring joy to the soul. Tears of a broken heart will cleanse us. weep again let America weep Lord let us weep again let America weep Thank you Mrs. Copeland what we need to do again amen so why do Christians not weep you ever thought about that why do, why do we not see weeping in our churches anymore well because we don't have a broken heart and why do we not have a broken heart because it's too hard to break Or we just don't pay attention to the world around us. Amen. Well, take your Bible, if you would, and turn to the book of John. John chapter 8. Again, it's a blessing to have all of our visitors with us today. I know there's some special guests. Folks have some family members and things like that. So thank you, family, for visiting your family today. Amen. Very good. John chapter 8. We'll just read two verses. Verses 31 and 32. So if you'd stand with me, if you're able to do so, in honor and reverence to the Word of God this morning as we read. John 8, 31 and 32. <laughs> nice echo. Amen. So you get to hear the message twice. John 8, 31, through, it may be a bad battery. I don't have any idea. If it is, I'll just use this. Verse 31 and 32, the Bible says this. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth, oh, I'm sorry, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Aren't we glad for freedom? Yes, we are. Our freedoms are in danger. And if we lose our freedom, we also then lose our independence. Well, let's pray. Father, we love you this morning. And Lord, we're thankful that we live in the greatest nation on earth. Lord, as waning as our freedoms may be, and Lord, as in danger our country might be, we're still the greatest nation on the earth. And that's only because of you. Lord, the Bible does still say, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I was born in America, that I have the freedoms that I have. Lord, that we have those freedoms. And Lord, those freedoms are even available to those who immigrate to our country. Most all of us standing here this morning come from immigrants. That we're seeking freedom and independence. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless America. Thank you for those purple mountains and the golden waves of grain and the beauty that you've bestowed on this country. Lord, as we look around at our nation, physically and naturally, we have a beautiful place to live. And Lord, through the years, we've had a beautiful place to live also because of the freedoms that we have. And we do pray today, Lord, that you would stir our hearts Lord, to go back to praying and weeping for our nation. 
or let us be like the prophets of old, Lord, who would even confess the national sin of the day and beg for mercy. And Lord, you showed mercy. And we thank you for that. And I pray this morning for each person present, Lord, that you would again speak to our hearts today. Remind us of the greatness of this country and how it depends completely upon you. And Lord, we thank you for visitors and pray you bless them as well. In Christ's name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln said, We the people are the rightful masters of both Congress and the courts, not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow the men who pervert the Constitution. Uh, whether you believe it or not, Abraham Lincoln was probably the greatest president America ever had. He was president during a very difficult time. But by the grace of God and his belief in God, he went through those trials, he went through those troubles, and he held America together. Samuel Adams says, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Wow. See, we've lost the old pioneering spirit. Uh, as the Bible says it, talking about Israel, they had settled on their lees. Or as the Bible says, and I believe it's 1 Samuel, maybe 1 Kings, they were at ease in Zion. And we have come to that point. And, and by the way, I'm grateful that we have been able to come to that point. You know, in the early years of our country, even in the early days of our country, it was a constant battle. And I know that America has been at war multiple times. And America has also gone to the defense of other countries who could not defend themselves. But in America's time of need, who's going to come to her defense? Well, we say God. But when a nation turns its back on God, God doesn't come to their aid. God sends chastisement. And until God's people, we're not talking about the nation as a whole, but God's people. When God's people turn back to God, when God's people repent and turn from our wicked ways, then, the Bible says, will I hear from heaven and heal their land. America has always been a great nation. Hasn't always been a great place to live. I'm sure glad we don't wear wooden shoes. And those little knickers. Boy, am I glad we're past those days. Amen. Amen. And you go through museums and things and you see the uniforms that our military used to have to wear. You wonder how in the world did they ever survive? You know, three quarter inch wool in the summer. Marching through the jungles in the tropics and those types. It's a wonder they survived at all. Not, if not for God, they wouldn't have. I said this already. We're not celebrating July the 4th. We're celebrating Independence Day. Amen. Amen. Our forefathers fought and gave their lives, gave their fortunes, gave their homes, gave, gave their possessions to win the freedom and the independence that we have. And was it Benjamin Franklin, I believe, that said, Brothers, we must all hang together or surely 
we will hang together. And they were willing because they believed that God was on their side. See, the difference in America and most other nations is the men that came to most other nations were in search of gold. But those men and women and boys and girls that came to America were in search of God. They came looking. One of their main reasons for coming to America was for freedom of religion. And by the way, most Americans today don't understand what that means. Separation of church and state is completely confused today. Most people believe that that means the state ought not butt into the church's business and the church ought not butt into the state's business. But that's as far from the truth as could possibly be. When they were talking about separation of church and state, you have to remember that there was only one church in England. And that was the Church of England. And if you were not part of the Church of England, you were an unregistered church and you could be imprisoned or even put to death unless you followed the state religion. And so when our forefathers said separation of church and state, they weren't talking about that the, the church is free from the state and the state's free from the church. They were just simply stating that they did not want to see another state church. That we're free to worship God, not however we please. Don't mistake that either. We're not free to worship God how we please. But we are free to worship God how He says. Not according to the rule of a state government-ran church. Go to most countries. And there are state churches. And most other, if you want to call them churches, that gather have to do it in secret. Hiding in fear of losing their lives. And, and can I say right there, most of them are more faithful than most American Christians are. Though we can walk around just as free as can be. Thank God for Texas, amen. We never did really have to shut down, though we did. Governor Abbott said from the very beginning, this does not apply to churches. We chose for testimony's sake to do it, and for safety's sake as well, but we didn't have to. We never did get fined for singing the hymns. Last Sunday was Pastor Jack Treber, their first time to be back in church completely free since COVID started. Over 15 months, they'd meet in the parking lot or just on video streaming, and I watched their, their video stream of their first service back. Man, you talking about some excited people. Yeah. Brother Treber, every time the camera hit him, whether they were singing a hymn or a special or just announcements or somebody sharing a testimony, he's wiping tears because they were back in the house of God. For about 40 minutes, all they did was sing. They were making up for those times that they couldn't. <laughs> and it was good. And every time Brother Treber would come to the pulpit, he would tell the people how much he loved them and how glad he was to be back in the house of God. Sir. Yeah, America's heading in a direction we don't want her to see her go. Yeah. Where it may come a time when we can't meet freely like this. May come a time we can't stand publicly and read the word of God. 
But as long as we have our freedoms, we ought to stand up for them. We ought to vote properly for them. You say, you're being mighty political. Well, America is political. That document we love so much called the Constitution, that is a governmental document. I thought it was pretty neat. I didn't go to it, but I thought it was pretty neat. I don't remember exactly where it was, maybe one of the libraries or something, that they had a public reading yesterday of the Declaration of Independence. Right here in Amarillo. Well, again, that's what, that's what today is about. It's not about fireworks, though I like fireworks. Last night the sun set and the fireworks show started. I could look out the living room window or the kitchen window. Didn't even have to get up out of my recliner. <laughs> and watch about an hour and a half worth of fireworks. I love fireworks. In Mexico they had one called a cuete. It didn't have any flash, none, but it sounded like a cannon going off. Boom! And you hear, and then the boom was about three times as loud as the one that shot it off. And that's all it was, a big boom. They'd fire that thing off. and every, You know, you talk about sparklers. How many of y'all like sparklers? You would love Mexican sparklers. You know, they're not these little bitty you know, thinner than a pencil. These things are like three feet long and as big around as your finger. <laughs> they certainly wouldn't let us have them in Amarillo because of how dry it is around here, amen. <laughs> wow. Independence. What is, what is true independence? Yeah. Well, can I say it just like this? True independence is complete dependence upon God. So our forefathers knew who was behind them. They knew that they had prayed. They knew that they had sought his face and they knew that they had to do something to stand against the tyranny of the day. Yeah. I said it. Tyranny. Well, what is tyranny? Trying to make you do what you don't want to do. Or trying to make you do what you know is not right to do. They put our Christian forefathers to death for standing against tyranny. They did the same thing to those men who fought for the freedom of America. America started out with 13 colonies. Thus the flag with 13 stars in a circle. And then as they expanded, you know, a star was added for every state. Amen. And then there's the Lone Star State. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True independence is not being free from everything. But it's being free to follow God and depend upon Him. Yeah. That's true independence. We are called... Independent, fundamental, Baptist. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, what does that mean? Our independence is not just independence from other groups, but is, it is the independence to depend on God, Amen. to follow His leadership, right. to follow His word, to stay true to His doctrines, yeah. to hold fast to the old Baptist distinctives. By the way, we didn't, be, we didn't start being called Baptist for a long time. But the Baptist practice can go all the way back to the church that Jesus started. Yeah. They weren't always called Baptist. As a matter of fact, you don't read in the Bible, the first Baptist church of Jerusalem. You, know, you don't read Philadelphia Baptist Temple. 
You don't read those things. They were just a local New Testament church. Well, what does that mean? That means if to be a local New Testament church simply means that you hold true to the Word of God. We are independent of the rule of a denomination. And our independence of a rule of denomination means that we depend solely upon God and His Word. He was speaking, Jesus here was speaking to Jews who had believed on Him. Not every Jew, but those that had believed upon Him. Those who had trusted Him as their Lord and Savior. These last few days, Thursday and Friday in particular, uh, we went Thursday evening to Miss Monica Rodriguez's funeral service, memorial service, and then we went back Friday morning. And uh, I've, I've honestly never seen a funeral of any sort attended as well as hers was. That building was full. Thursday night and it was full again Friday morning. The community was there. County sheriff's deputies were present. School board members from the Hereford Independent School District were there. People that Monica had worked with. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I, I love about the Spanish language is sometimes they overstate things. And one of the things that they always say when they're talking about accepting the Lord as your Savior, not only do, do we say you accept Him as your only Savior, but then in Spanish they add another word that makes it even stronger. Not just is He our only Savior, but He's our only and our all-sufficient Savior. <laughs> That's what independence is is dependence upon God. And when America depended on God, America was a great nation. The reason America is not as great as she used to be is because America doesn't depend on God anymore. America has become self-sufficient. Now I'm all for American made. Amen. I'm all for getting the jobs back, and I'm all for using our energy supplies. I'm all for that. But in some of that, we've become so self-sufficient that we don't need God as a nation. But sadly, the reason why the nation has gone that way is because the people of God have gone that way. When's the last time you actually had to ask God for your daily bread? Now we thank Him for our daily bread. But when's the last time you had to ask Him for your daily bread? So we have refrigerators and freezers and cabinets and they're full. We go to the refrigerator, the cabinet, the freezer, and we get what we want to cook or eat or whatever it is, and we fix it, and then we say, thank you, Lord, for our food. And we ought to thank Him for our food. But we've been so blessed that the blessings have created a self-sufficiency and has eliminated true independence in our lives. So I want to look at just two thoughts this morning. Oh, that's introduction, amen. amen. <laughs> Two thoughts on what true freedom is. Amen. Let's go back to our scripture this morning, John 8, 31, 32. We'll read those again. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If you're here this morning and you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is applicable to you and me. Amen. If... Ye continue in my, what? Word. Word. Then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. Well, how do you know the truth? 
By continuing in his word. And then what does it say about the truth? The truth shall make you free. So then why was it that America was set free? Because she continued in his word. Knew the truth and then the truth set her free. Uh, many of you would remember Brother Chuck Harding reading and telling and sharing how it was those old preachers that stirred the heart or the fire for the fight for freedom. Isn't that what Samuel Adams said? Does not take a majority to prevail. By the way, believers are not the majority. But it doesn't take a majority. Somebody said it this way. Me and Jesus are the majority. <laughs> so it doesn't take a majority, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. One of the greatest battles that was won was won by a church. The preacher stood in the pulpit that morning and preached about freedom and about independence. And after the invitation was given, the whole church went out and fought a battle and won. Now, I'm not going to ask you all to do that. Not today, anyway. But it was, it was those preachers of old that proclaimed the gospel and the freeness of the gospel. How salvation is a free gift to all mankind. And that is through the word of God. It's not through a state church. It's not through government processing and government instruction. It's not through that. And they stood and they fought for the freedom that came from the Word of God because the Word of God is true. And truth makes us free. So the first thing that we understand about what freedom is is freedom is knowing the truth. Why are men bound, if you want to say, or why are people in bondage to Satan? Because they don't know the truth. But when the truth of the glorious gospel shines in, then they see the gospel, they hear the gospel, they believe the gospel, they trust Christ, and they're set free from the bondage of sin. Well, see, that's exactly what happened to America. The truth was preached. The truth was heard. The truth was listened to. The truth was applied. And it caused men who were just farmers. They were just country folk. Even up north, they were country folk. I used to... Y'all, how many of y'all remember Brother Billy Norton? Him and his wife came preached the youth conference, the youth rally. Yeah. Brother Billy is from College Park, Maryland. And uh, he thinks he's from the north. Maryland. But if you go back and go by the Mason-Dixon line, College Park, Maryland is south of the Mason-Dixon line. So I would pick on him all the time. He'd preach for the North in the North South School of the Prophets, and I'd say, You're not a you're not a Yankee, you're from the South. And he he'd get all he I mean he'd get really wired. No, 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 no. And I'd say, the problem with you Yankees is you don't even know where the line is. <laughs> I'm just joking, it's okay. There was no North or South. When America fought for her freedom. They were one nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty. 
But you know what liberty really means? Freedom and justice for all. And America has always been the catalyst for freedom, justice, and liberty. And unless we know the truth, we can't continue on the path that we're on. They don't teach history anymore. They change it. That's just the truth. And if we don't know the truth, how can we be free? And by the way, that's exactly how socialism and communism take over a nation is by eliminating the truth. The media, they don't report the news. They tell you what they want you to think. That's not freedom because it's not true. I remember one time, Brother Terry Angel was preaching our church in Jacksonville and, uh, at, a, at a conference, a camp meeting, and the George Bush, the second George Bush, was president at that time, and, and he was telling a story of how it didn't matter what George Bush did, the media was going to twist it. Well, if they were doing that for George Bush, remember what they were doing to Trump? So he tells the story how the Pope came and George Bush took him out to you know, Martha's Vineyard and they're walking around the lake and so forth. And, and, a, and a pretty strong wind blew up and blew the Pope's little beanie off into the middle of the lake. And President Bush said, don't worry about it, Pope. I'll go get it. And he walks on the water out to the middle of the lake. Picks up his little beanie and walks on the water back over there and gives the Pope his little beanie back. Well, the next morning the news reported, President Bush can't swim. <laughs> well, that's about how things go, isn't it? Well, and, and the reason that they don't want us to know the truth is because they don't want us to be free. They want us to be bound by their truth, if you want to call it that. They want us to be suckered in. They want us to be lost. They want us to be confused. They want, they want to try to tell us what's right and what's wrong, what's true and what's not. And the only way that we can defend ourselves against that is to know the truth. And the truth will make us free. Bible colleges are taking our preacher boys that we send off to college and telling them there's only one certain way to preach. You know, there's, there's all sorts of different manners of preaching. You know, you have textual, that means you preached out of a text. Uh, there's topical, that means you pick a topic and you preach on that topic. But some of our Bible colleges today are saying the only real way to preach is to uh, preach expository. And here's what I said to my boys. No, the only way to preach is to get back to just some simple old-fashioned Bible preaching. Whether it's topical, textual, textual topical, exegetical or any of those other big words that I don't even know what mean. <laughs> Just preach the Bible. Amen. Just preach the truth and then the truth will set you free. The truth is what made America free. The truth is what made America great. And we sing the songs and we say the pledges and there's nothing wrong with those things but those things don't make us free. It's the truth that makes us free. The truth is, if you're not saved, you're going to hell. Yes, That's just the simple truth. Amen. Well, that offends me. Well, as I have said before, 
whoopie do. <laughs> or as I would say to my kids sometimes, they'd say, you know, Dad, I didn't like that. I'd say, and? <laughs> they'd, you know, say something, and I'd say, and? And then they'd finally get it. Uh, no need to keep talking because Dad's just going to keep saying, and? <laughs> what is the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. The truth is trusting in anything else, any religion, any creed, any, any uh, uh, religious activity, trusting in any of those things is not going to get you to heaven. That's the truth. You know, by the way, that needs to be taught not only in here, but in every child's Sunday school class. In junior church, Timothy and my wife are back there doing junior church this morning. You know, just to be honest, don't throw the Mavis, unless you got a salt shaker with them. <laughs> my favorite place to preach is junior church. You think I'm crazy in here? You ought to see me in junior church. I'll pop up from behind things and come in sideways and upside down and all sorts of stuff. I was telling in the teachers meeting, we used to illustrate our messages. Like we're preaching on the maniac of Gadara. You know, we'd have, you get preaching along on that and then you have somebody come out of the the puppet stage or out of the kitchen area or whatever and uh, got a guy sitting on his back dressed in a devil suit and he's covered in ketchup. He did have clothes on. The maniac of Gadara did not, but this guy did. Uh, also, we did all sorts of crazy stuff and you can do that in junior church. You can't quite do that, you know, in big church. You kind of have to halfway act civilized. Halfway. The truth is, folks are lost and need a Savior. The truth is, Jesus fixed that problem. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <laughs> That's the truth. It wasn't a baptistry. It wasn't a denomination. It wasn't a sacrament or any of those other things. It was Jesus and Jesus alone. And the truth is we must act upon that truth if we're to be free. Amen. And then not only knowing the truth, but number two and the last thing this morning is living the truth. There's a difference in knowing something and living it. Most people know what's right, but they don't live it. But freedom comes not only when you know the truth, but you live the truth. Well, again, what is truth? The Bible says, thy word is truth. So how do we live the truth? By following this book. If this book says it's right, it's right. And if this book says it's wrong, then it's wrong. Right and wrong does not depend upon our feelings. If it feels good, do it, is the motto of America today. No, we should live, if it's right, do it. And if it's wrong, don't do it. 
Doesn't matter who's doing it. I remember I'd go ask my mom, Mom, can I go do such and such? She'd say, no. I said, well, everybody else is doing it. And every time she'd always come back and say, well, if everybody jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? <laughs> well, I guess not. And that's just how my mama was. And I was just dumb enough to ask her every time when she'd say, no, well, why not? Everybody else is doing it. And it was that same, you know, <laughs> that look that you know, makes you want to crawl under a rock. <laughs> I've seen that look before. And it was because I said something stupid. And I'm getting that look again. So I imagine it's because I've said something stupid. And then that phrase. If everybody jumps off a bridge, are you going to do it too? No. Living the truth. Living the truth. We live it out by following God's word. Look at Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Verse number 6. Let's read verse 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. We're supposed to speak with grace, seasoned with salt. What does that mean, seasoned with salt? Well, some things without salt don't taste very good. How many of y'all like watermelon? Anybody like watermelon? If, if I'm going to eat watermelon, it has to be almost frozen. I mean, it has to be cold. And I have to have about five pounds of salt. Because the only flavor watermelon has is salt. Otherwise, it's just wet. <laughs> you know, we used to have watermelon seed spitting contests, but now they only grow seedless watermelon. It's hard to spit a seed if there ain't one in there. Salt. That simply means flavored, made taste better. Oh, did I, did I hit a nerve? That's what our speech is supposed to be like. Can we, we just stop right here, couldn't we? Because most of us need our speech seasoned and covered in grace. <laughs> and that's just the truth. And the truth will make you free, amen? <laughs> truth. We live out the truth in word. Amen. Uh, by the way, when, when Peter was overwarming himself by the fire, and they said, hey, we recognize you. What was one of the ways he tried to prove he was not with Christ? By his filthy mouth. Yeah, that's free didn't cost you anything this morning. Your words are supposed to be seasoned with grace. Pure. Edifying. That means lifting up. Building up. Encouraging. Now, I know, as well as anybody else knows, every now and then, we have to reprove and rebuke and exhort. But we do that with long-suffering and doctrine, the Bible says. What is doctrine? It's truth. Yeah. It's the Bible. 
Not only do we live out the truth in word, but we're to live it out in deed. Look at James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Verse number 18. James 2, 18. I'll get there in a minute. The Bible says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. See, we don't get saved by works. But according to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, we are ordained unto good works. That means we're supposed to live out our faith, our truth, our freedom by the things that we do. Our actions speak louder than our words. Somebody said it this way. Your walk talks and your talk talks. But your walk talks louder than your talk talks. See, we say stuff and then we don't live it. And we show ourselves to be, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, hypocrites. Why do our kids leave home and leave church and leave God? Because mom and daddy live one way at church and another way at home. Uh oh. Now I done stopped preaching and start meddling. Why is it? Why is it that our young people are confused? They hear the preacher say one thing and they see somebody else live another way. Our actions have to meet up and be the same as our words. And that's how we live out the truth, by the things that we say and by the things that we do. How many of y'all know that little song, that little chorus? The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. There's been a great change since I've been born again. See, when we get saved and the truth gets in us, it changes us. That's why the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Why? Because our deeds, our actions change when we're set free by the truth of the Word of God. And we're not supposed to judge, but you can judge if you want to say that, whether a person really got saved or not, by whether or not there's been a change. Right. Now stick with me just a second. Not everybody changes at the same rate. Yes, the Apostle Paul went from on his way to kill people to preaching the gospel on the same day. Yes. If God saved you and told you you were going to be a missionary to the To the Gentiles, at the same moment, you'd probably faint. But that's exactly what God did with Paul. But how about some of them other disciples? They were just as much disciples and just as much apostles, and it just took them a little longer to get there. We don't all change at the same rate, but we all ought to be changing. Say, Pastor, I've been saved 49 years. Well, keep changing. Keep getting more like Jesus. Keep living out the truth in word and deed. Now, the Bible says that we're supposed to be doers of the word, not hearers only. We've got churches around our country that are slap full of hearers. And there's a small percentage of doers. That needs to be turned around. Well, actually, what needs to happen is they need to be equalized. Because if you hear, you should do. Amen. And you do what you hear. And then one of the last ways we live out the truth is in song. What? In song? Yeah. We're supposed to praise the Lord. 
And one of the easiest ways to praise the Lord is to sing. Isn't that what David said over and over and over and over again? I will sing praises unto the Lord. Say, Pastor, I don't like to sing. Well, let me tell you again. Whoopie do. <laughs> Doesn't matter if we like to or not, it's what we're supposed to do. I'll lift my voice. I'll sing praises. Why? Because if we've got a song in our heart, it's going to come out on our lips. And others will see Jesus when we're praising him. Uh, and don't tell me you don't like to sing because you run around singing your favorite songs all the time. got you on that one didn't I freedom true freedom is knowing the truth and living the truth because the truth is what makes us free and gives us our independence which is in all honesty 100% dependence upon God because if we get independent of God, we ain't free. Right. We're back in the bondage that we started out in. So let me ask this this morning. You don't have to answer with a lifted hand or anything, but answer in your heart. Are you 100% sure that you've been saved? That you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you 100% sure? If something happened right now and either the trumpet was to sound or you were to fall over right there in your pew, that heaven would be your home? Okay. If you know that 100% sure, you're free. Amen. You're free. If you're trusting in anything except the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not free. You're bound. You're bound by the thing that you're trusting in. The Bible says that the law was a schoolmaster that pointed out to you that you needed to be saved. But you were bound by the law as long as you were under the law and you were under the law until you trusted in Jesus Christ. If you're here and you don't know that, if you're not 100% sure that heaven would be your home, you can find freedom this morning. You can be set free from what's got you enslaved. You can be set free from the thing that holds its iron fist over you and makes you do what it says. Or you can trust in Christ and be free to do what he wants you to do. Maybe you're saved, but you're not living the truth. You're not living it in word. The things that come out of your mouth are not pleasing to God. Somebody said it this way. Cursing is the attempt of a feeble mind to express itself forcefully. God didn't create us to talk that way. God wants our words to be bathed in grace and seasoned with salt. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe not only you're not living it in word, but you're not living it in your everyday actions. For whether you need to be saved this morning and need to be set free from the bondage of sin, or whether you need to be set free from the lack of living out the truth. Whatever your need is, the altars are open. Would you stand with me with your heads bowed and your eyes closed? Father, we love you today. And we thank you for your word. Because it's the truth. And I pray, Lord, that you would take the truth of your word and penetrate any heart that might be here this morning that does not know you as their personal 
Lord and Savior. I pray that you would break through the bondage and set them free this morning. And Lord, as believers are gathered here today, Lord, if there's any of us at all that are not living out the truth the way we ought to, Lord, help us to come also and get some freedom from the bondage of those things. Lord, help us to live in true freedom and independence. Lord, knowing and trusting you brings that freedom and independence. Living for you brings freedom and independence. Lord, will you touch our hearts this morning and help us, Lord, to seek the freedom and independence that comes from you and you alone. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Would you come this morning? If you're here this morning and don't know Jesus as your Savior, why don't you come down here and let somebody take a Bible and show you how you can have the freedom from the slavery and bondage of sin. Maybe you're here this morning and you're just not living the way God would have you to live. Why don't you come and get freedom from that? Ask God to help you and give you the strength to live the way He would have you to live. Whatever your need is, Maybe you've been saved and haven't been baptized and you want to come and get that taken care of this morning. Whatever you choose, whatever the Lord's laid on your heart, why don't you come this morning and do just what he would have you to do. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. O Lord, be absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. Why I am waiting, yielded and still. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. You can sit down for just a moment. We'll have some instruction on our dismissal.